What is going on everyone? Thanks for clicking on the video. So I am in the car right now and Paula is driving. And if you saw last week's video, we went out to dinner to Taco Joe's, which I recommend you going back and looking at the last video. But basically it's like a combination of Moe's and Chipotle. We haven't been there in a couple of years until last week and it was amazing. So that's why we are headed back there right now. Um, but while we're headed there, I am going to play my workout footage from my last bench press workout and I will do a commentary with that. So enjoy that footage and then I will catch up with you at Taco Joe's after the workout. What's up everyone, welcome to the commentary portion of the video. So here you're gonna be seeing my latest bench workout, which is the 531 week on 531. And this is the last week prior to my deload. So this is typically the heaviest week on the routine. So, and you'll see me work up to my AMRAP set in just a bit. Um, you'll also see after the bench, I did film every exercise that I did on this bench press day. So if you guys are new to the channel or you just don't remember, typically the way I set up my routine, I have my bench day where it's typically just after bench is a full upper body workout. On my overhead press day, I also have a full upper body workout. And then I turn my squat day and my deadlift day into full lower body workouts. So essentially my routine is 5-3-1, but it's broken up as an upper lower split, making sure that I hit everything two times per week. Uh, so that's just a little overview of what I'm doing. I can go into more detail if anyone wants, just I wanted to give you guys a little update since I got some new subscribers recently and I want to make sure everyone's on the same page. So here I am doing the AMRAP set. This is 260 pounds. And also just so you guys know, these plates are actually heavy at this gym. So even though it's 260, it's actually closer to 275. Uh, so it's really like 275 for four reps. And now I'm doing some back down sets. And now I want to get into the topic of the video that I wanted to discuss. So a lot of people when they're designing their routine, they have trouble deciding which exercises to select for certain body parts. And if you notice in my videos, I don't do a lot of, I guess you could say, fluff work. For example, on, on chest, you don't really see me doing many like, flies. You don't really see me doing anything but main compound movements. And basically my approach to selecting the accessory exercises is pretty much choosing the exercise that I guess you could say is the best bang for your buck. So. What I mean by that is I don't like to waste my time with the exercises that I'm spending time on that don't really hit the muscle as well as they could be. So I like to choose the, the compound exercises that I know hit the muscle well, and I don't really waste my time with stuff that hits the muscle but not as well. So for example, you see me doing pull-ups here as a back exercise, and you'll also see me doing rows after I do these pull-ups for back. I don't really waste my time with lat pullovers, um, I mean, our pullovers a good exercise I mean they're pretty good they do hit your lats but I don't really see pullovers as hitting my lats any differently or any better than a pull-up so I don't really see the point in doing them at all to be honest with you so I typically just do five sets of pull-ups and I prefer to do more pull-ups rather than those other exercises that might hit the muscle but not as well because like I said the best bang for your buck I don't really wait I don't want to waste my time with an exercise that I think might hit the muscle but doesn't hit the muscle as good as it should uh, like I said here I'm doing barbell rows and I decided to try them taking my shirt off while I did them and I have to say taking your shirt off in the middle of a gym and doing an exercise makes you feel extremely awkward but you got to do what you got to do for the thumbnail right so like I was saying barbell rows and pull-ups I would say those are probably the two most compound exercises you can choose for back that and deadlifts and those are all I do on well, this particular day and then my other upper body day you'll see me do like pull downs and dumbbell rows and like I said I don't really waste my time with those smaller accessory exercises like the pullovers even cable rows I really stopped doing because I feel like you could do you get a better result from doing the exercises that are tried and true and you know work like for example here on shoulders I'm doing Arnold presses you're not going to see me really doing like rear delt flies you're not going to see me doing upright rows all those little shoulder exercises that, yes, they hit your shoulder, they're not bad exercises, but an Arnold press hits your whole shoulder, and I feel like I'm better off spending my time doing an Arnold press than I am doing an upright row, for example. You will see I also do lateral raises afterwards, because I do feel lateral raises are a good exercise. And for biceps, I'm doing cable curls, because they basically hit your whole bicep, and they are efficient 
So let me just wrap up what I said. I'm not saying there's anything bad about doing any kind of isolation exercises like pullovers, like like chest flies, like upright rows. What I'm saying is that if your time is limited in the gym, you want to select the exercises that hit the muscle most efficiently, most effectively. And you don't necessarily have to waste time if you don't have the time doing the smaller isolation exercises because yes, they might work, but I'm never, you're never going to see anyone say that a dumbbell pullover for lats or chest is more effective than doing bench press and pull and pull ups. It's just not. So if you don't have that time, there's no point of wasting it doing those kind of exercises. You could do something else. So I thought I would address that. Workout footage is almost over. You see me doing tricep pushdowns. Those are one of my favorite tricep exercises. That, um, you see me doing lateral raises because there's really no better way, in my opinion. Yes, you could hit your side delts with Arnold presses and overhead press. But I do think lateral raises are necessary to really get that shoulder cap. So that is why I always choose to do lateral raises. But I don't do that many other exercises for shoulders. So workout footage is wrapping up here. Uh, like I said in the beginning of the video, we do go to Taco Joe's, which is kind of like a combination of Chipotle and Moe's, only better. So if you want to see us go there and eat a massive burrito, stay tuned for that. Hit that thumbs up if, it, uh, if you're enjoying the video. If you have not subscribed yet, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button as well. Leave a comment below if you have any questions about anything that I've said or anything further you want me to discuss in another video. And I'll see you guys in the next clip on the way to Taco Joe's. Yeah, we don't want to walk any further than we have to. Sorry guys, they're too quick here. I didn't get a chance to show them making the burrito, but let me show you what it looks like now. There's mine, and there's Paula's. That looks pretty good to me. Amazing. Look at all that free wah. I used to like the Chipotle, the bowl that it comes in better than this, but yeah. ingredient wise. No complaints. No complaints here. <laughs> here is the head comparison. Thing is pretty massive. Alright, so this is pretty massive as you can see. Um, in the last video, I told you guys that there's no macros here. So when we get in the car, since it's loud, I'm gonna go over how I estimate the macros just so you guys know how we estimate when places don't have macros. And let me take the camera and show Paul's. This hers looks pretty good. Mine is pretty good. It's like the same thing as a burrito, just in a bowl, plastic bowl. And there's no Chipotle crowd here, that's also pretty cool. Alright, so we're gonna eat this quick, well not that quick, and then we'll speak to you in the car on the way back. Alright guys, we just left Taco Joe's, we're leaving the parking lot, and we're about to go over that little speed bump that caused a little of a commotion in last week's video. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, while I was in there, I told you guys that they don't have macros, so I wanted to tell you how we track the macros, or how I track the macros anyway. So, it's similar to Chipotle, it's also similar to Moe's, so what I do is I use the Chipotle meal calculator online, which is already there. I input that into my fitness pal, and then in my estimation, Taco Joe's is slightly bigger, they add a little more rice, a little more beans, a little more chicken, so basically a little more everything. So I pretty much take whatever the Chipotle macros are, and I take about another 15% of what that is, and I just, I keep that in mind and I add that over. So, pretty much I just do Chipotle plus 15% on the protein, fat, and carbs, and that's what I estimate it to be. Is that completely accurate? Absolutely not, because as you know, even the Chipotle one wouldn't be completely accurate. So obviously using Chipotle macros on a place that's not even Chipotle can't be that accurate either. But it's close enough when you're doing flexible dieting, that's the whole idea, you can't be too strict as long as you're consistent as long as you're relatively close you won't have any problems so that's what i do but anyway we are not getting froyo tonight again yeah i know what's wrong with us so we are going to head home and the video will wrap up here see you later if you enjoy the video hit that thumbs up it really does help us out a lot uh subscribe you might be subscribed already but if you're not subscribe and i will see you guys in the next video and here comes the speed the bump all right, wasn't that wasn't that bad? Last week was a lot worse. All right, see ya.